So we're done with the year 2017, yay! And now we have a whole nother year of movies to look forward to, yay! <laughs> so with that in mind, I kind of wanted to go back over the year of 2017 and just talk about the films that I saw in a very relaxed, cool, friendly, happy environment. So let's just do it. A lot of the movies that I'm going to talk about I've already reviewed on my Snapchat reviews, which are on YouTube, which you can find, and they're all very hilarious and entertaining. Um, this one's going to be a little in-depth. I don't know. But let's just do it. The first movie that I saw was Split, and Split's fine. Split's definitely interesting. The camera work I remember being really good. James McAvoy's performance was really believable, and it could have been completely ridiculous. Thankfully, he did great. Anya taylor Johnson, I think her name is, uh, did a fucking great job. I like her a lot. It's kind of silly. They keep going back to the psychiatrist instead of focusing on this situation with James McAvoy and these girls that he kidnapped. Uh, and I think that killed the momentum and the pace of the film a little bit for me. But it's a fine movie. Um, it's entertaining, so. I don't know, watch it if you want to. The Lore, I reviewed already. It's a very interesting, strange movie that I definitely recommend watching. The Lego Batman movie I saw on DVD and it's really funny. The Lego movie was equally as surprising. The same energy and like the same quick style of humor is found in this one as well. And it's a great homage to Batman and it's a good parody film. I think it's really funny. Get Out, which was just nominated for Best Picture and Best Director and Best Actor, that's fucking insane. Uh, saw that very early on in the year and it's really good. I can definitely understand and appreciate what the film is trying to say. I just wish it was a little bit scarier but it's a really strong film and a really, really strong first directorial debut from Jordan Peele. Um, I'm very happy for him. That's very exciting. Uh, I lost a bet because I said that Get Out wouldn't be nominated for Best Picture and I lost, so that's fine. It's not that I didn't want it to, whatever. Logan is another film that I reviewed, but it is, uh, it's a really outstanding movie. It got better the second time that I watched it. Hugh Jackman's performance is excellent, as is the young girls, as is Patrick Stewart's. The action is grounded and exciting and bloody and violent and very intense and aggressive and brutal. The story is simple and realistic. It's so fucking great and so dark and depressing and moody and exciting and I, I, I love it a lot. It's a great, great movie. Ra's another movie that I reviewed. It's really good, uh, really good horror movie. The Belko Experiment I reviewed and I really, really didn't like that movie at all. I thought it was mean-spirited and pointless and unexciting. Power Rangers is another film that I saw and reviewed and it's pretty harmless. It's very stupid, um, but it's not that bad. The performances and the young kids who portray the Power Rangers in the film do a really good job. There were some aspects that were really strong. Uh, ultimately, it's really fucking stupid and it's fine. It's fine. Your kids will love it, maybe. The Void is another film that I watched and reviewed and it's not good. I was really, really stoked and excited to see this film. It didn't pull anything off in, in a great way, except for the makeup and creature effects. I didn't, I didn't like it and I wasn't excited or scared or shocked. I, I was just bored, um, which is unfortunate. I love low budget indie horror films. It just didn't, didn't hit me the way that I wanted it to, so I didn't like it. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword is such a failure on every level. Um, I had a great time watching it. <laughs> oh, it's dumb. Guy Ritchie is a director that I haven't seen a whole lot from, but I understand his style. And there are there are blips of it in King Arthur, but it really doesn't belong. It's a, it's a lovely film. If you want to get drunk and watch it with a bunch of friends, you should. Alien Covenant is another film that I saw and reviewed. It's not good. 
I really was looking forward to this as well. Prometheus was a much more interesting film, but this movie fails as a sequel to Prometheus and as a remake to Alien. It's so jumbled, it never pulls anything off successfully. And really, Scott's a talented director. It looks beautiful. Michael Fassbender is amazing. And it's sprinkled with interesting ideas and scenes and concepts, but it never is consistent. And that sucks, because this movie could have been so cool. It was not very good. It's very dumb. That shower scene was so fucking stupid. <sighs> uh, Wonder Woman is another film that I saw and reviewed. I love that so many women connect to it and they have this superhero that they can see and follow and that's great. But the movie was not nearly as spectacular as all these people are saying. I really appreciated the chemistry and the dynamic that uh, Chris Pine and Gal Gadot had with each other. And the look of the movie was really nice, but it's dumb and loud and stupid, just like every other DC fucking movie. It's not nearly as bad as, as Batman vs Superman. It's certainly not Suicide Squad. It's just there in existence and it's fine. It Comes at Night is a film that I saw and reviewed and it's really good. It's very, very small and contained and it focuses on the psychological terrors that happen when you have a bunch of people grouped up together in a small area and the claustrophobia and dread that this movie makes you feel is very well done. It's not a straight up horror film. The direction is great. The performances are all great. It's really good, really good. Baby Driver, I saw and reviewed and it's good. It's exciting. Um, I wish I liked it more. I love Edgar Wright and his visual style, especially in this film. It's fun. It's a fun flick. If you haven't seen it, watch it and you'll like it, I'm sure. Spider-Man Homecoming came out and that was a really good movie. It's very funny. Thank God that they didn't just go with another uh, origin story for Peter Parker. It's a good movie, it's, it's fun. War for the Planet of the Apes was a really good movie. It ended the Planet of the Apes trilogy on a pretty high note and it's crazy to think that. No way in hell that any of these films should be as good as they are. They're certainly not perfect, but there's so much humanity to it. And the visual effects are obviously the most astounding part of it, but it's an engaging tale. It's exciting. Andy Serkis did a fucking amazing job with his motion capture, uh, like he always does. And Woody Harrelson was fucking awesome too. I forgot about him. That's a trilogy done right. It's a remake done right. And it does everything pretty well. What else came out this year? I wonder. I'm Michael Caine. Dunkirk, I uh, saw this and reviewed it, and it's a really good film. The best thing about Dunkirk is the way that it's shot and presented, and the overwhelming scenario that these people have found themselves in is really something that should be seen on the biggest screen with the loudest speakers and all that bullshit. I don't think it's one that I would ever wanna watch again, there's not a whole lot of character involvement. You don't really know who these people are, and I understand that that is the point. You're watching a battle, and you're, you're seeing how these people cope with all this madness going on, but I don't know. It's a good movie. <laughs> Wind River, it's really good. It's strong. Every performance from, I, dude, I can't remember anybody's fucking name, and it's amazing. Hawkeye, that dude. And Elizabeth Olsen do a really good job. It's a quiet film, and I don't think the writing is on par with the director's other work. He did Sicario, and he did Hell or High Water, and the dialogue was so rich and interesting, and it was a pleasure to listen to uh, the characters talk to each other. So I, I, I wish that was more apparent in this, but it's still a very, very, very good movie. You should watch it, because it's good. Uh, they did a re-release of Terminator 2 Judgment Day in 3D, and it was fucking awesome. I don't typically like to go see 3D films for a myriad of reasons, but the way that they applied it to this film was really excellent. This is a great director at the top of his game, making one of the best science fiction films of all time, and they converted it to make it look fucking outstanding. And that was a great experience seeing that in the theater. 
It is another movie that I watched and reviewed, and it's certainly entertaining and well-made and well-acted. I just wish it was fucking scary. I didn't feel any fear while watching this. I know that that doesn't really have an effect on like the merit of the film, but when that's its that's its job, that's its purpose is to is to frighten me. And it failed at that. I'm just like, it's so manipulative. And they just keep trying to tell you through the music like, "Ooh, now you should be scared. Now you should be happy." It's also tonally inconsistent. There are a lot of just strange, weird jokes and moments that don't land. I'll, I'll probably watch it again at some point, but I don't know. I hope I don't like it less <laughs> when I watch it this next time. Mother is another film that I saw and reviewed, and it's fucking insane in the best way possible. It got nominated for Worst Actress from Jennifer Lawrence and Worst Actor by Javier Bardem, and like Worst Director, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. I can, I can, I completely understand the divisiveness of this film, but it's well made and it's just thematically rich and deep. Mother was fucking crazy, batshit insane, but it did its job and it uh, served its purpose as a feature length nightmare. And in that aspect, yeah, it was awesome. All right, I'm gonna give myself a little light. <laughs> So yes, better right? Maybe, I don't, I don't fucking know. Loving Vincent was the next film that I saw and it is really boring. I fucking love the fact that all these people came together to paint this movie uh, frame by frame. Obviously that was the best aspect of the film. It's a series of interviews from people who knew Vincent Van Gogh in his final days. I think if the story was just a little bit more engaging and told in a different way, maybe it could have been something really spectacular. Cult of Chucky, I saw, and it's really dumb. And I love Chucky. I have an affinity for Chucky for some strange reason. But this one just kind of had a few too many missteps. It was very silly, which is fine, but I think it handled it a little bit poorly. Blade Runner 2049, review that as well. An amazing film, so dense and interesting and deep and transcendental. It's so good and it's so smart and it's fucking beautiful. Ryan Gosling's a great actor. Harrison Ford actually gives a fuck this time. The music is so fucking good. Um, I liked it a lot. Blade Runner 2049 is the most like visually arresting film that I've seen in a theater in a very, very, very long time. God damn. The Florida Project I watched and reviewed and it's very sweet. It's a very good, realistic, dirty, grimy fucking film uh, about poverty and it's kind of sad. It's not as hopeful and carefree and magical as the trailer would lead you to believe, but it's completely worth seeing. The performances from everyone are just astoundingly good and very, very real. The little girl is precious and adorable. The mother is so completely unlikable, but she sells it. Willem Dafoe was so, so fucking warm and nice and charming. I want him to get a win for Best Supporting Actor, but that's probably going to go to Sam Rockwell uh, for a movie that we'll talk about later. The Babysitter is the last film that I saw and reviewed on Snapchat. There's a lot of empty thrills. It's very immature, I feel, and it's presented in a very obnoxious way. I think the actors do a really good job. The young kid and the girl are really good. It's, it's, it's an annoying picture. Um, it's unfortunate. I wouldn't waste my time with it personally, but I did. The Killing of a Sacred Deer is a very, very strange film. I didn't get all the way through it. Unfortunately, I was very tired and I fell asleep in the movie theater. It's a strange fucking movie, but I loved The Lobster, the director's most previous film that also starred Colin Farrell. The Killing of a Sacred Deer uh, needs to be watched again, for sure.
I saw Thor Ragnarok and it's fine. There's just so many fucking superhero movies coming out these days that it makes me want to fucking jump off a building. But this one has a lot of fun and it has this energy that I think was missing from the other Thor films, even though I haven't seen them. Kate Blanchett is fine, she has nothing to do and it goes exactly where you would expect it to, which is unfortunate. But it's funny, and it's fun, and the music is great, and the style is dope, and the ideas are interesting. It's fine. Thor 3 is fine. Whatever. God damn it. I hate, I hate this shit. Lady Bird was excellent. It was way funnier than I thought it was going to be. The performances from everybody are really, really good. It's a very pleasant watch. It's a great uh, coming of age tale that is very relatable. It was really good. It was a, it was a lovely, it was a lovely little fucking film. Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri is an outstanding fucking movie. Uh, I fucking loved it. This one is so dark and so funny and so heartbreaking and interesting and engaging. And you expect that things are going to happen and they never do, or they go in the exact opposite direction. It's really exciting seeing that kind of filmmaking these days, and I'm very happy that it's getting so much attention at the Oscars and at the Golden Globes or whatever. Frances McDormand is incredible, and Woody Harrelson is amazing, and Sam Rockwell is fucking awesome. Everything about this film is awesome. I loved it. I really, really loved it. Justice League, ah, oh, God. Damn it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not good. It's a mess and it's stupid and it's not long, thank God. I had to see it. I had to see what was gonna happen and it's not nearly the train wreck that it could have been, but it's, you, you kind of feel like bad for these guys. It's not good storytelling. I like Ben Affleck as Batman, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman is very charming and she fits that character and Henry Cavill as Superman is great. I think everybody did a fine job but it's just another bad DC superhero movie and it's unfortunate but they just keep making him. I don't know. Call Me By Your Name was an excellent movie. It's very intimate and delicate and sensual. There's no real structure to the film it kind of meanders and shows you these two men developing a relationship for each other, and it's beautiful. It doesn't depend on graphic sex scenes between two dudes to make you feel that they actually love each other. Um, it's very restrained in that aspect. It's one of those movies that you feel like you could just keep watching. Very realistic, very well written. That's very good. The Disaster Artist is a great movie. It's very, very funny. James Franco does an incredible job at portraying Tommy Wiseau and not just as a caricature for us to laugh at and mock. He genuinely makes you feel for this man. And I applaud that. I thought he was really good. They were really focused on shoving like as many celebrity cameos in this thing as possible. And I hate the way that it began and ended. It just begins with these celebrity uh, talking heads, just kind of talking about the room. And the end of the film shows you the scenes that they shot of the room and they play them side by side, the original footage and what they shot. And it's very technically interesting, but that could have been like a video on YouTube. I wish that that just wasn't a thing. Also, it, it kind of feels like the movie gets a little bit worse as it goes along. I think the very beginning is my favorite and it's the most emotional and endearing and you see these two people become friends. No matter what storytelling conventions had to play in somehow. And the ending of the movie is certainly like the weakest, the, the last like 20 minutes or so. It's still very strong, it's still very funny. It's not perfect, um, but it's everything that I wanted from uh, retelling of The Disaster Artist, so uh, I liked it a lot. I, Tanya was pretty good. Margot Robbie did a fucking excellent job as Tanya Harding. Um, she was very vulnerable and honest with her performance. It's, it's interesting. I didn't think that when the characters broke the fourth wall and talked to the audience directly, 
uh, was pulled off as well as the talking heads. I feel like that could have been left out. And I wish it engaged me throughout the film. I, I guess there was a point after the first like hour that I kind of lost a lot of the interest that I had while watching it, but it's still a very well-made film. Uh, the lady who plays her mom does a fucking awesome job. She's incredible. The performances are the best part of the movie, but I would recommend it. It's good. The Shape of Water. Uh, Guillermo del Toro does a great job at directing. He's so passionate and understanding of human emotion, and it's a beautiful film. It's so lovely and romantic and strange and exciting. Um, there's a lot of nods to film culture and filmmaking and movies and, and, and watching them. And it's really exciting just seeing how passionate he is and seeing that in his films. The creature itself is so incredibly detailed and majestic looking. It looks so fucking good. And just because it's a movie about like this lady fucking a fish, like you buy it and you get it and you accept it. It's really good. I liked it a lot. It was very good. Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Hmm. 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 I didn't fucking like it. I didn't hate it. Star Wars had a lot of problems. I think the director did a really good job. Kylo Ren is the most interesting part of this trilogy. The stuff with Finn and Rose was terrible. The stuff with Poe on the ship was equally as bad and boring. It was just filled with unnecessary, boring bullshit. And nothing happened. I feel like no character really went through any sort of change. I appreciate what they did with Luke. What they did with the Force made sense. Um, I like that they delved into the philosophy of it a little bit more. Puppet Yoda was awesome, and fucking Rey going into that weird, like, space void thing was great. But there weren't enough moments for me to remember, and I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. And I'm so sad that I didn't, but, you know, whatever. Pitch Perfect 3, I saw, for whatever reason. I never saw the first two, uh, but I did see this one my own free will. I, I mean, what do you want me to say, man? Like, it opens with the universal theme being acapella by these girls. Like, I thought I was gonna rip my fucking ears off, but it was fine. It was harmless. It was so stupid. All the girls in it are just so sweet and lovely. And they're talented. I wish there was more singing. I wish that there wasn't this stupid fucking side plot about Fat Amy's dad. It, uh, it was kind of a weird flick. There's so many different ways that they could have gone with this, and even people that like Pitch Perfect, the series, didn't seem to end up liking this one a whole lot. Um, so take that however you, you want, but it was stupid as fuck. The last film that I saw was Phantom Thread, and every aspect of filmmaking uh, was pristine. It was so fucking well acted and Daniel Day-Lewis completely dissolves into this other person and you don't see an actor you don't see Daniel Day-Lewis you just you see this man and it's mesmerizing to watch all the other actors do a superb job the music's fantastic the direction is beautiful the look of it is excellent it's stylish and it's mysterious and intriguing and disturbing I really liked it a lot so that's it that's all the movies that I saw uh, bye! That was fun.